today we're going to be talking about motion dump cutting or making dump cuts from flying or running dump positions. This is important because especially horizontal stack offenses use moving handlers to clear space and attack defenders. Your goal is to get open from moving dump positions, even in the most difficult places on the field, like when you're trapped on the sideline. By using small variations in pace, footwork, and the angle of attack, you can make defenders have to guess where you're going to be instead of lock down on where you are. Each one of your cuts will be more effective if you can get lower than your defender and use that to burst while you're moving. By lowering your center of gravity, you force the defender to react to you instead of trying to run straight up where you can't turn as well. Even when your physical cutting is explosive, a good defender can establish position and ride you into a place that you don't want to be. We'll use small variations, adjusting the line, changing our footwork, or using different timings to get the defender on their heels and take what we want. Inevitably, every handler will get too close at some point in the game. When that happens, we'll use a drop step footwork to get back behind our attack point so we can reestablish and choose the line that we want. Based on your matchup, you may want to open up different handler spaces in different ways. By adjusting your line of attack up the field, you can open up easier dumps and dumps that lose less yardage. On the other hand, if you're very fast and want to attack up the field, you can make that an easier throw by adjusting your line behind the thrower and attacking up the field with a longer cut. There is no single offensive footwork that is always successful. If your defender is locking in well on straight on cutting, you may try a slide step to loosen that defender and allow you to get a little bit of space at the beginning of your cut, which hopefully you'll translate into a more open cut at the end. Today we're gonna to talk about using these motion dump cuts. And to do that, we've put ourselves in the worst possible situation. Frank is over the cliff on the sideline. He's got a mark forcing him to that sideline and Sam has to get open for him. Sam's gonna do this by getting in motion, charging to his attack point, and then hopefully going upfield, but going backfield if he has to. Ready, go. Good, excellent. Now, as Sam comes back to do it again, one thing that you'll notice is that as Sam gets to his attack point here, his head is really low. He's trying to bring his center of gravity down and charge so he can burst. He's not standing up and seeing the field. He's getting low and bursting. Ready, go. He's down below shoulder height, and he's ready to make his move. He's trying to drive his player off. Again, same thing. Sam is gonna get underneath my hand as he goes. So you can watch as he goes, he gets down, and that helps him get into his man and move the disc. That extra yardage, getting your man off you by a yard or two can open up your next throw. Let's show this again. Getting low and bursting, good. And as long as you get low when you hit this attack point, you're gonna have an advantage over your defender. Good defenders get low as well, but hopefully we can get there first. There are a couple of things that Sam can do to make himself more effective. One is that he can slide his first couple of steps. When he faces and starts to charge, that tells Casey exactly what he's doing. He can see the field a little bit and start with a slide, which can be more difficult to read. It might loosen up his defender. So you're gonna start with a slide. It can help him charge. And sometimes you can get open on your defender without them even being able to really grapple on at the beginning. Again, one more time, try to go up the line if you can, sliding to loosen Casey up and using his body. Good. So Casey's locked in on him. He's gonna slide to loosen him and then drive. While it would be great to physically overpower your defender every time, there are many defenders that are so athletic that you need to loosen them with different kinds of footwork. Against very tight defense, Frank can give himself some advantages by playing with his line. Most horizontal offenses line up exactly parallel, but if we bring Frank a little bit in here, now you're gonna find that as he comes, he's gonna open up space to come back and make an even easier throw that loses fewer yards. We do that one more time, this time at full speed. So line adjusted, bringing Devin up field a little bit, attacking and creating a better angle. He's not stuck on exactly one line. That's excellent. Let's do that one more time. This time, Frank's gonna adjust his line into the backfield. 
He's saying, I'm so fast that I need more space to get open in. Now he's gonna try to charge up field from here. He can change the angle and get an advantage on Nevin. Now he had three different starting places, any of them he can attack from. Try it one more time, choose any line you want, attack anywhere you want. Now our defender has to guess much more than knowing when the race is going to be run. Adjusting your line and going. Good. You will find that when you watch game tape, there are older or more experienced or more successful handlers that do this without thinking about it. If you can plan these moves out, you can get an advantage on a defender. Now, all too often in horizontal offenses or even vertical stack offenses, we get caught too close to our player here. Frank is too close and getting open without much room to charge is very difficult. So if we just started him here, now he has to really bump and grind to get away from Nevin. Good. What we want is we want footwork that will allow us to regain our attack position. So Frank is going to have to turn over a shoulder, maybe even while Sam's still looking up the field, he's gonna have to turn and drop step back so that he can get momentum against Nevin. So you get yourself caught here, you don't just accept a bad position, drop step, look over that shoulder, get away, now attack. Now that's effective. What we want are handlers that not just get to the right position, but inevitably, when they get to the wrong position, have a way to get out of it. As Sam catches this disc, Frank is gonna see he's in a bad position and get better footwork. So catch, find it, drop over the shoulder, and now he can attack and get the disc out. Good. I wanna do that one more time. I want you to get far enough back so that you can really charge Nevin. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ready? Frank realizes he's in a bad spot, drops, then he can get his charge and attack one way or the other. Good. And now we're off the line and Frank was able to regain his advantage. One high level thing that you can do on defense, most defenders at the dump like to line up on this 45 degree angle. However, with motion dump cutters, this is a really hard angle to maintain. And if you miss it at all, Frank can go behind you or he can go on this side. So what I'm gonna ask Nevin to do is actually line up vertically with Frank, get his shoulder just about square. Now he may not get a block here against a very good offensive player, you won't get the disc at all, but as Frank comes, I'm gonna keep, 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 and even if he goes up the line and catches it, it will be for short yardage and with a mark. So we're gonna try to maintain it and keep containment rather than getting that catch block. Nevin, will you show this one time? against the best offensive players, what you're hoping for is to keep these cuts short, maybe confuse a thrower or force a tight throw, and don't let them get away from your containment. You're gonna get drops, you're gonna get throwers frantic and turning to something else, instead of either getting the block or giving up a big play. Nice. Now we're gonna to try to make this play a little bit more game-like by letting Sam cut and catch this disc, freeze it right there. You'll see that Frank is already moving away from the play. He's not at blazing speed, but he's going early to get behind his point so that he can set up his next attack. Uh, let's show the full thing. Frank is gonna find Sam on this cut and he's gonna immediately start to establish his position, go ahead, gets his disc, Frank thinks away from the play, find his spot and attack. Good. Now, great handlers hustle to their spot immediately. They don't have to be the fastest players, but they have to start moving to their spot to get to it. This time I'm gonna ask Frank to even push wider and faster to make Nevin run a long way. Then he's gonna get more open, he's gonna try to drive up field. Ready, and go. Frank's gonna get wide, wide, attacking, and now he has an angle. Good, we can hit this spot, like an archer pulling their bow. We can hit this with a lot of power if we pull the bow back all the way to the other side of the field. Let's see that one more time. And hit the cutter. Frank's immediately getting to his position. He's seeing the field. And now he can hit his break point with speed. And we can take the disc up the field. You'll know you're doing this well if you're immediately moving away from the disc to set up plays, if you're hitting your attack point low, and you're trying to drive up the field. And that's how our motion dump cut set allows us to get yards out of footwork. You'll know that you're doing this right if one out of every three dump cuts 
has you going one direction and your defender taking the bait and going the other one. If you're always beating the defender just by a body length or just by your initial advantage, then they're playing you too well and you need to adjust your handler footwork. You'll also know that this is going well if the thrower is able to make easy throws where they don't have to step out or throw hard. If you find yourself catching very fast discs, it means that you're opening up only a small window and we need to use our footwork to make it easier on the dump thrower.